All right, so this is project three for uh, Intro to Database Systems. And um, project three, as it's uh, written here, it's uh, essentially project two all over again, creating the four tables from figure 2 6 uh, in page 43 of the book. Um, I think there's a typo uh, right here in the turn in the printout of all three tables uh, because here it says create four and here it says print out three so I suspect that uh, you'll be generating the four tables from figure 2-6 and then printing all four so uh, this is sort of a mixture of project one and project two because uh, project one had us taking screenshots or printouts as this will be doing uh, and project two was the creation of these four tables. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is download Microsoft SQL because that's the one I'll be doing first. Um, so SQL Server download, it knows what I want, it's Google. And I'm gonna go to the actual Microsoft link and then once in there, um, there's the developer and there's Express. Um, I like to have all the tools available to me, so I'm going to go with the developer. I know this download is a little bit larger. Um, I think it requires uh, something like 8 or 8.5 gigs of free space. So I'm going to download the executable and then run it as soon as user account control lets me. And then wait. And I'll just go with basic. I figure that's got all the tools needed to at least create some tables, maybe make some foreign and primary keys, you know, actually build a database, skim through that user agreement, and hit accept. All right, yeah, so minimum free space, sorry, more like nine gigs, um, although the download is significantly smaller, I suppose that's just allocation for databases themselves. All right, so click install. Maybe I'll speed up the video a little bit. Okay, the installation has finished and the computer needs to restart um, to complete the installation. I'll point out this uh, connection string real fast just because that's going to come into play later because the local host is going to be the server connection since we're not doing anything remote and the initial database is going to be master. So that'll come up here in a second. Let me restart my computer. All right, so this is post restart. Uh, as of right now, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, in my case 2019, is now installed on the computer. So essentially that just installed the, the server itself, right? Um, but what we really need uh, to do some business here is the DBMS, the Database Management System, uh, so or software. Now, there's an easy way to do it uh, since you have it already installed, and that's to find the uh, SQL Server Installation Center. So either if you have a shortcut, go to it there, or just uh, type it in your Windows search bar and go to the Installation Center. All right, so in here, uh, go to the Installation tab on the left-hand side, and what you're looking for is the SQL Server Management Tools. Uh, so click on that link, and it will take you to a website, one of Microsoft's website. And this is what you are looking to download, the uh, SSMS. This essentially allows the interaction with the database that we just installed. Um, it's much like having the GUI from the MySQL that we were using in the past. Um, so seeing that there is uh, a couple minutes left on this install, I will uh, fast forward to the next part of the video. Now that it's done uh, downloading, I also changed my cursor so it's a little bit easier to see, given that I'm doing a lot of screen capturing here. I'm going to open the uh, install executable. Here we are. I'm going to leave everything to its uh, default location. And given that this might take a while, I think I will also fast forward to the installation completion. And what do you know, another restart is required in order to complete the setup. So I'll restart the computer again and then get back to you when it's done.
All right, we're back from the uh, system restart, and uh, as you can see, I've got open the uh, the textbook to the right and some of my notes on the left. These are the very same notes uh, used for Project 2 as far as the, uh, the tables and the order in which I wanted to create them. I might be referencing those a little later. So now that uh, the SQL Server database itself is installed and the uh, SSMS, or I think that's SQL Server Management Studio, is installed. You can launch that. Uh, I usually just do a quick search to see if it's there. Um, oh, SSMS, sorry, SSMS. And here it is, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So click it, launch it. All right, so with uh, with SQL Server launched, or sorry, the, the Management Studio launched, it's going to ask to connect to a SQL Server, right? Because you just installed it, uh, you have it on your laptop or desktop, if that's what you're using. And uh, the server name in this case, like I had pointed out earlier, it can be localhost, uh, much like it was for MySQL. Uh, you could also, if you really wanted to, use a period because that essentially does the same thing. Uh, we're going to go with localhost just to keep it uh, standard and then hit connect. Also going to maximize this. All right, so this is, this is your user interface for uh, the management studio. Pretty simple, I think, um, as far as organization. Uh, it does give you a lot more detail than MySQL does. Uh, it might be a little less user-friendly, uh, but it's not really designed to be user-friendly. It's designed to be robust. So the first task we need to perform is making a database. So head over here to the Object Explorer. Uh, if the Object Explorer is not up for some reason, you can uh, find it in the view, if I'm not mistaken. Object Explorer, F8 would bring it up. So on database, right? Right click on it and hit new database. So in this case, the database name I'm going to use is, uh, how about project three? Sounds logical. Don't worry about anything else at this point. Um, there's a lot of settings you could change prior to creating a database, but uh, nowhere near that level yet. So just type in project three and hit OK. It's going to execute. As you saw down here, there was a little execution ring. And the database is created. So expand the folder containing databases. And now you will see Project 3. Now, Project 3 already has some default stuff in it. This is not the stuff that you would see in MySQL, although it existed. Um, again, this uh, management studio is a lot more robust. So uh, just like before, we're going to need some tables. Um, right now, it's got some basic, again, like system tables and such. Uh, but we're going to want to put some like literally right inside this table folder. Now to do that, uh, just like the last time, you're going to right click and then go new and then over to table. So this is going to look a lot different um, and get used to the way this is laid out uh, because it's going to look a lot like this from here on out with the grid style almost Microsoft Excel-esque. Um, in this case, you don't name the table first. You could, but you don't have to. Uh, the table naming will come at the end. So this process is pretty simple. Uh, so for the first table, I'm going to use the order I had come up with during Project 2. Uh, so I'll consult with, with my uh, notes here and determine that retail order uh, is kind of like the highest in the, uh, the order here just because there are items that use its primary keys being like the order item. And then again, there's a primary key here and then a primary key here and then another primary key here. So I'm going to go with uh, retail order first because that's my number one. I'm going to do buyer second and then SKU data, and then order item. Uh, I will be switching between those windows frequently. Uh, I'll even tile them up uh, over here. So uh, in fact, let me do that, make it even easier. All right, so the first column name in uh, order or retail order is order number. Type that in, and you can tab on over to data type. Um, now I'm going to 
rely on the other portion of the book uh, for these. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have gone up. Look at me. All right. So retail order, uh, it's got a data type of integer. So you can you can just straight up type that. You, there's a pick list that you can feel free to look at, uh, but you can type int and it will be just fine. Now in this one, uh, there was no need to include nulls uh, or or have the ability to use null as a value. So I'm going to uncheck that. Um, to recap real quick, the nulls aren't going to come into play uh, until we get to the tables that have uh, potentially nothing there, like a, well, we won't be doing the catalog, but that would have been a page number because the page could have been blank. Uh, right here where I have like check null, uh, and that's also going to be buyer where the supervisor can be checked null. So we'll come back to that. For now though, uh, we're not allowing any nulls there. So you can, I mean literally just tab, whoops, you have to be in the window you're wanting. You can really just tab through all these uh, fields to enter the data. Uh, so the next one in here being store number. And that again is of type integer. So you can just type int, uncheck no with spacebar, and then tab down to the next line. So we'll run through this, store zip, tab, and it's character nine. Now in the book it says just character. Uh, you can use character um, of just uh, char if you want with no value to, uh, to limit it. The default in here is 10. You can use variable character. Um, for this case, uh, because the book has got just character in there, I'm going to go ahead and use character uh, and change that to 9 and uncheck allow nulls and then tab down. And the next uh, column being order month. Tabbing on over, that is a character of 12. So there it is populating character. When I start typing, I manually input 12, uncheck allow nulls and then tab down to order year. Uh, here it's just an integer, so int, uncheck allow nulls, tab down. Finally, order total. Now, uh, Microsoft SQL, it's got, uh, last time we didn't have currency or money in uh, the fields for MySQL, but this one does have money. Uh, it's right here and feel free to use it. It's just going to change the formatting. You won't use a dollar sign when entering things, but you can still use the uh, figures to the left of the decimal and then two figures to the right of the decimal. And it will understand that you are uh, entering it in uh, money format. All right, so that does it for the retail order table. In order to save it, you hit close and it's going to prompt you like, do you want to save the items for that table? Uh, well, of course you do. So when you hit yes, it's going to prompt you for a table name because you hadn't given it a name yet. Uh, and the cool thing about this is you can actually uh, save this stuff in all caps. So we're going to do so just so it matches what's in the book here. And then hit OK. All right, so if you go over here to tables, right click and hit refresh, you should see a retail table. Perfect, right? Um, now, that was just adding the table without a primary key. Uh, you could have add, added that primary key uh, while you were creating it. Uh, I'm going to do that on the next table so you see how it's done. Uh, to go back and do that, and this will be something persistent, uh, you just click the table and right click on retail order. Now click design. Now design is going to bring up those columns as you had just seen them when you were entering them. Uh, the simplest way to uh, add a primary key from the GUI is to go to the uh, row, or in this case it is a column, uh, and right click on it. Set primary key is the first choice. Left click on that and then close it. It's going to ask if you want to save the changes. You hit yes and it commits those changes. Now to verify, you can go over here, expand that. Oh, you know, you might want to refresh it first, so right click on table, hit refresh. Now, go to the retail order table, expand it, 
go to columns, and right here you'll see a little key for primary key. And when you hover over it, you'll even uh, get that little uh, pop-out that says, uh, what is that, order number, uh, and then in the parentheses, PK for primary key, and then the data type, integer, followed by not null. All right. So the next table, as I have it, is going to be the buyer table. So buyer table over here. So same process. You'd go up to tables, right click, new, and actually click table when you do it, and then move on with the, uh, the buyer columns. So the buyer columns as they appear over here are buyer name, and in the book that is a uh, character of size, is it 35? Character 35 not allowing any nulls, but this is a primary key. So you can set it right here before you even uh, commit the table. Now again, that was just a right click and set primary key. It says remove primary key now because it's designated one, but had it not been left click or uh, right click on it, set primary key and click on that. All right, so the uh, other column names are department. And that is going to be a character of size 30, not null. And then position, character of size 10, cannot be null. And then finally, uh, supervisor. Now this one can be null, so we're going to keep it checked. Uh, the supervisor is also a character of size 35. All right, so with that, again, making sure that stays checked this time, you'll X out of that tab, at which point it will prompt you, do you want to save that table? Yes, of course. And now enter the table name. In this case, it's buyer. Click OK. Uh, refresh your tables if you want to see it make sure it's there and there it is the next table we are concerned with is going to be the uh, SKU data table so bring this back up so I can check out what SKU data has in it again right click on tables new <laughs> keep missing it it's this new giant cursor alright so column name for this SKU being the first it is going to be an integer, and I don't want to allow nulls. So uh, this is a primary key. Uh, now again, I'm getting some of that data from the book, um, this page way down here, uh, where it shows all the tables, their names, underlining what the uh, primary keys are, and then underlining and italicizing the uh, foreign keys. Again, I also have notes off to the side here uh, and the one note uh, in the background that I've been leaning on. All right, so the next column in the SKU data table is SKU description. And that is of type character, size 35, unchecking. The next column is department. of character size 30, unchecking, and then finally buyer. And that is character size 35. Also not null. So once you've got all your column names in, hit the X. You want to save the table and you haven't given it a name yet, so do so. And this one was skew underscore data. Click OK. Refresh. And here's skew data. So right click, new. Same process, this final table being the uh, order item table. So I'm looking over here at order item. 
first column name is order number. Now, if I'm not mistaken, order uh, order item has nothing but foreign keys, so we're not going to do anything with that just yet. And order number over here is an integer, so just int, uncheck, and tab on through. Skew, int. quantity uh, int price this is that money type and then extended price also money type all right so hit X yes you want to save that table give that table the name it is uh, order item D E R and then refresh. All right, and there's the four tables that we are concerned with. The next part in all this is setting up the foreign keys. So, looking at the book, um, if you are dissecting the diagram here, you know that the arrow heads are the primary keys and the uh, the back portion where the little uh, circle is or dot is the foreign key. So you know order item is going to have a foreign key for order number that links to the retail order table order number. Uh, the order item table skew column is going to have a foreign key that links to the skew data table under the skew column. The skew data table buyer column is going to have a link to the buyer table's buyer name. And then a recursive uh, foreign key within buyer is going to have uh, the supervisor as a foreign key to buyer. Uh, but supervisor was allowed nulls, and that's why you have that blank space underneath Cindy Low. Okay, given that order item has two foreign keys. I'm going to do that one first. So head on over to the order item table, right click on it, and go to design. Once you're in the design menu, go on up to the table designer menu up here, and go down to relationships. Click on that. All right, so here is where we're going to add a relationship. So hit add, and it's going to automatically give you a name. And this name has a, has a syntax format um, as far as which table is the foreign key and which table is the primary key. Uh, but we need to tell it which tables and which columns to associate, to, to have a relationship with, right? So you got to go down to tables and column specifics, arrow down, now this is very important and uh, sometimes elusive, but you gotta click on the three dots over here to the right. All right, once you're in there, you can give the relationship name something very specific if you want, um, but I just leave it as default for now. You need to then uh, tell it what the primary key table is going to be. So the first column I'm gonna deal with is the order item column. And the order item column its primary key is in the retail order table. So I go over here, and I go to retail order. And it's hard to see, but there's actually a, a second row right below it, and that is where you select your column. Again, it's kind of hard to see, uh, depending on the theme you have on your laptop. Uh, the lines are very, very opaque. So anyway, you're going to retail order, because that's where the primary key exists, and then you have to select the column that, uh, that, the, that is the primary key itself. In this case, order number. So foreign key, where we are now, is in order item. And the column in question is also order number, just because we name them the same. So once you have your primary key as retail order, column order number, and foreign key, order item, with the column order number, Click OK. All right, once you're done, hit close. And nothing's committed yet. 
Um, that's sort of one of the things you got to get used to on uh, this management studio is you've just made the changes but not applied them. Um, one of the best ways to tell that something hasn't been has been changed but not applied is if you're in a working window and you have a little asterisk up here. That little asterisk means you have things that have yet to be committed to the database. Um, that's a term you'll start getting familiar with is actually making database commits. Um, so again, that hasn't changed until you go to exit out. And it's saying you have changes that have been made. Do you want to save them? Yes. And here is what it's going to tell you. The following tables will be saved to your database. Do you want to continue? Notice it's not just saving the order item table that we were in, but it's also saving the retail order because that's where that primary key was. Um, and of course, it's warning about the tables affected. Yes. All right. So now I'm going to refresh the tables. Refresh. And we just added a foreign key for order item. So I'm going to go into order item, not like actually open it, but just expand these and go to the columns. Now you see that order number has a sort of key that's uh, hollow with the teeth up. That is a foreign key. And you can see with the little display next to the mouse, it now says FK for foreign key. Uh, again, if you look at retail order, expand that, go to columns, here's a primary key. So the key's facing the other direction, it's black and teeth down. All right, so now we've got the symbology out of the way. Uh, we're gonna add a, another uh, foreign key. Now you could have done this simultaneously by hitting the add button again, but I just wanna run this through the basics and do it one at a time. So going back into uh, order item, you're gonna right click, go to design, so that way you can see the columns. Go up to Table Designer, click, and then go to Relationships. All right, so you already see the relationship that's in existence. Uh, again, you could have hit Add before we closed out last time, but I want to do one at a time so that way you see it again when we open it up. So hit Add, and see, there it is, asterisk, something's there but not committed. Oh, it's because I clicked on it. Um, well, anyway, we're currently on the new one. So drop the tables and columns down so you can see the order item and order item. Nothing's changed yet. It still says just four and key columns. Uh, click on the triple dots there. And now the next column we are needing to associate is the SKU column. Uh, so in the primary key table, SKU is looking at SKU data. So over here, drop down, select SKU data, and it's the SKU column. So use the drop down below that and select SKU. The foreign key table, well, we're currently in order items, so leave that be. And it's going to also be the SKU column. So click on the uh, drop down menu and hit SKU. So hit OK. Now we've got the order item SKU data relationship, not yet saved, of course. Close that. Close that. It'll prompt you to save, and yes. Again, you'll get the same warning that now it's altering order item and also SKU data where the primary key is. So hit yes, and then we will refresh this, and you will see SKU will also have a little white key. Well, not that. Don't need to refresh the whole thing. So going back into order item, into columns, and now it too has the foreign key. All right, so now that that one's out of the way, we have to establish the uh, foreign key in SKU data. So going over to the SKU data, right click design so you can see the columns, and you already got the primary key in SKU, which we were just using. Go to table designer, relationships, See, it's calling out the relationship that you already have for because it has a primary key relationship in here. But we're going to add a foreign key relationship. So hit Add. Go back down to Tables, the little triple dots. And now you have to select a primary key table. So for this instance, the primary key table uh, within the SKU data 
is going to be buyer because it's buyer here and buyer name here. So the primary key table is buyer. The primary key column is buyer name. That's not where I wanted to click, right here buyer name. Alright, so foreign key table, we are in SKU data. The foreign key is going to be against the buyer column. So SKU data is here and buyer column. So hit OK. Close it. Close that so it commits and hit yes. Yes again. Now there are other ways to quick save these and commit them, but again this is just very high level stuff. We're not going to get into like all the shortcuts um, and all the other uh, you know powerful tools that exist within the SQL Server Management Studio. For now, this is where we're going to uh, do business. All right. So final foreign key is the recursive one that's inside the buyer table. So as you might have suspected, we're going to buyer. I'm going to look at the design on the buyer table. Now go to the table designer and relationships. So same deal, you will see one because we just added one between the uh, buyer name column of the buyer table and the buyer column of SKU data. So hit add and then drop down your table and column specifics. Click on that uh, triple dots and your primary key table now is not going to change. So that's the one big difference here is that you're still staying within the same table except you need to tell it that this time the primary key within itself is buyer name and that the foreign key for this table although it defaulted to buyer name is supervisor because supervisor uh, has to exist or sorry the the supervisor name has to match a buyer Right, with the exception that it can be blank, which is why when we design this table, you can see it in the background here, supervisor is indeed allowed to be null. So hit OK. We've got the asterisk saying uh, it has not been committed yet. Close it. Close the table design window. You'll have yes. And then refresh. So we were just in the buyer table. We will expand that to double check, go into columns, and now you'll see buyer name as your primary key, and there's supervisor as the foreign key. Now, I'm going to use this as a bit of a teaching moment, because with all those foreign and primary key constraints in place, it will matter, uh, well, the order will matter uh, that you put the data in. And again, that's because those primary keys have to make, or those foreign keys have to make checks against the primary keys to make sure they can actually reference something that exists. So going back to my project two notes, where I have the uh, the data entry order here, uh, with retail order being first, and then buyer followed by SKU followed by order item. I'm gonna have to stick to this uh, strictly, or else I'll get foreign key constraint errors upon uh, trying to commit anything to the database. Uh, so I'm going to do the first one, uh, retail order, without any errors, uh, self-induced. I will self-induce an error though, so y'all can see it. For now though, uh, well, I'll avoid that and just enter the retail order information. Now the cool thing about this management software is kind of like Excel, but not so much like MySQL, when you go to add information to it, you can literally just type it in as though it's a table and then commit that row or commit rows one at a time. Uh, I'm not going to do any of the advanced scripting this time around. Uh, I can possibly hold a Zoom session uh, to answer some of those questions if need be. All right, so the first table I said I was going to do is the retail order table. So for here, go to the retail order table and right click on it. Now, unlike MySQL, you have this edit option. Uh, you can change it in the settings. It says edit top 200. You could make that all rows. Uh, you can make that top 10 rows if you desire. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to hit edit top 200 rows. But of course, we don't have any yet. So it's just going to show me a bunch of columns that have null values in them. So essentially nothing but we have to enter in the information found over here. 
So um, much like, again, Excel, uh, which makes this a little bit faster, is you can just directly type in there. So the first order number being 1,000, store number 10, uh, store zip 98110, and I'll get to those little red exclamation points here in a second. Uh, the year 2017, and then finally the order total. Now this is important, do not use the dollar sign, it will hate you. You want to just type it in uh, numerically, so nothing, nothing special. Now, uh, much like before with the asterisks, those uh, those symbols right here, they uh, they're basically bringing your attention to the fact that you might have typed all that stuff, and that's fine and great, but it hasn't committed to the database yet. Uh, not until you move down to another row will it try to commit it. Now I say try because if there was a foreign key constraint, it might just say. No, you can't do that. So if you were to hover over, you'll see the cell has changed, but has not been, and there's the terminology, committed to the database. The original data is null, because in fact, when you open it up, there was nothing but null values in there. So you could hit tab, or you could just simply click down to the next row, but if luck will uh, favor me, clicking won't produce any errors, which means that stuff is now officially committed to the database. No, no closing the tab to make that change. That's why it's edit. Uh, the rows. It's not just a, a viewer return. Uh, so I'm going to quickly add this stuff, uh, maybe fast forward a little bit because it's very uh, repetitive, but it's going to be the same process for the following two rows. All right, and I hit tab uh, to finally commit that last one. So that stuff is officially now in the database. All right, so the next one would be uh, buyer, right? And with the exception that buyer has to be in a very specific order because of that foreign key. Now here's where I will attempt to give that uh, self-induced error here on the second table I'm going to write. So this table is the buyer table. I'm going to close this, right click on buyer, and hit edit top 200 rows, which there is nothing there. Alright, so the Internal or recursive foreign key is that uh, the supervisor either has to be null or it has to exist inside uh, the database in this table already. So uh, that being said, I'm going to attempt to enter uh, this first line, Cindy Lowe, with Mary Smith as the supervisor. Now I expect and hope it doesn't make a liar of me that it'll give me a foreign key constraint saying uh, Mary Smith cannot be located in the buyer name column of the buyer table. So let's give that a stab. Cindy Lowe purchasing buyer to uh, with a supervisor Mary Smith. Now here's where I expect a big red warning. Aha! And there it was. So what happened was I clicked down here as though to move on to the next row. Pressing tab would have done the same thing. But here's the error message. It was not committed. And then it gives you the long error statement uh, that's essentially saying the conflict occurred in the buyer table in the column buyer name. Because, you know, the buyer name currently doesn't exist. Now had I left that null it would have been okay because we allowed nulls on here, but that doesn't exactly match. So I'm going to hit okay, and of course it still hasn't committed. Um, and I will now return to the original order that I have here, being uh, the the order on the left hand side: one, two, three, four, and then five. Now here's uh, an important note, uh, in order to get a cell to be null, it's not zero, um, it's not necessarily null, you can type it, if it italicizes that's fantastic, but a control zero, which is what I just put, will also give you a null. So if you have nothing in, or if you have something in there or nothing in there, and you hit control zero, which I just did, that will give you your null. So you can type null, as long as you see it italicized like such. 
Um, otherwise, it's going to actually think that null is like character array, right? So you don't want that. Uh, to err on the side of caution, personally, I will always do control zero because I know that is inserting a null. Not me typing null, but actually inserting nothing. All right, so from there, hit tab. And it was perfectly fine with it. It was perfectly fine because we allowed nulls in the supervisor column when we designed this table. Everything else, though, if you add it, if you add something other than null, it's going to have to jive with the buyer name. Anyway, I'm going to now progress through and enter in all of these in the order in which I have them listed out, and then speed that up and get back to you on the other side. Okay, so now everything has been entered successfully into the buyer table. Following this order, the uh, next table that I'm going to have to uh, add data to, so that way there's no more foreign key conflicts, is going to be the SKU data table. So I'm just going to close this, go over to SKU data, right click, and hit edit top 200 rows. Uh, same thing here. Uh, you can add the, the SKU, and I'm going to try to uh, read this. It's not a very uh, not a very good image on that uh, the PDF. Here's a good opportunity, real fast, to. Uh, show you that foreign key effect again. As you see the buyer table, uh, we established that there's a foreign key between the buyer column uh, here and the buyer name in the buyer table, meaning the stuff here has to match something that's in the buyer table. So if Pete uh, Hansen, if somebody misspelled their name uh, to maybe like Henson, and then we tried to commit that, it would say no can do because Pete Henson doesn't exist uh, where the primary key is. So make that correction to Hansen and then try to commit it and voila. All right, now I could go and enter every one of these uh, SKUs, their SKU description, uh, their department and their buyer information and uh, really make a boring video, but I came prepared and I'm a lazy database management specialist, so I prepared a script for such an occasion uh, earlier on uh, that will enter all that information for me. Now, don't pay attention to uh, the other rows. They haven't been modified to fit the syntax. Uh, this right here, though, this will enter everything uh, I need. So it's insert into, in in this case, the syntax is DBO for the uh, for that object that is the table, uh, SKU data followed by the columns in brackets because they're column names, followed by values, this outside of quotes because it's just an integer, and then everything else inside quotes because they're characters. Um, Again, that's just sort of like a very, very uh, broad stroke overview of how to script at least this table here. Um, go ahead, take a screenshot, but I'm going to copy this. And then go over here, back to uh, where I'd already got this, uh, the first line for the SKU data table entered into, and hit New Query, which is up here in the toolbar. So this um, is similar to that query line that was in MySQL where you can type those commands. So I'm going to paste uh, what I just copied out of my notepad in here. Make sure there isn't anything glaringly obvious like underlined in red, which is it checking for syntax. Uh, and then right before I run it, I will delete this first line because that's something I'd already entered. And if I don't delete it, it's going to uh, pop a primary key constraint because it can only have uh, one unique SKU in the table. And trying to enter a second one that, uh, or a second SKU that is identical to that first one I entered would just give me a whole bunch of errors. So anyway, with this, uh, this lovely insert script essentially uh, pasted into the query window, I'm going to hit execute. 
look down here, make sure the query executed successfully, and check to see that all those rows were affected. All right, so with that, I'm going to close out. I want to save changes to it, or sorry, don't you don't need to save changes to this because it's asking if you want to save that uh, SQL script for later. Uh, we're not saving the SQL script. The script already committed everything to uh, to the SKU data table. We just need to see it. So I'm going to right click and edit top 200 rows so we can see them. Sorry, go back here. And there they all are. So that's all the data that needed to be entered uh, according to uh, this table right here. Okay, finally, the uh, table that needs to have its data entered into it is going to be the order item table because the order item table was essentially lowest on the foreign key hierarchy here. So anything you entered into it would have already had to exist. So now that we have all the SKUs in there, we can go in and enter this data. Um, now I'm not going to be as lazy on this one. I will hand jam everything into the order item table. Just once again, speed it up uh, so you all don't have to sit through and uh, watch me enter it all agonizingly. So in order to do that, again, you would right click on order item, edit top 200 rows. Now the cool thing about this DBMS is that it's going to do things in tabs, so you could potentially edit two tables at the same time. I don't need to do that, so I'm going to close the tab for that previous table. And then, uh, as promised, uh, fast forward while I enter all the order item information in. Perfect. Now everything is entered into all the tables we need. I'm going to double check the actual instructions on this project, but I think all that needs to happen is taking uh, screenshots of those tables and uh, turning them in. So turn in a printout of all three, uh, read four tables with your name on the first page, marked project uh, three. Uh, so, you know, this is another uh, good time to use that snipping tool if you've got it. Um, you could return the rows one of two ways in this case. You can do the uh, edit or you could do the return. So looking at like the buyer row or buyer table here, you could say select top 1000 rows. Cool thing is when you do these is you'll actually get the select statement. Um, this is again really great because it's, uh, it's a management studio that uh, when you make changes, uh, if you have the right windows open, you can actually see the scripts that are being run against the database. You can almost self-teach um, what's going on looking at the syntax. Uh, so for myself, uh, I would take this piece right here because it actually shows that you're in the results. Um, it gives row uh, numbers. Uh, and all the data. So I would take this if you, uh, and then of course just copy this and paste it into the Word document. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm sure you know how to do so. If you wanted to be uh, just extra about all this, you could potentially uh, move these two rows together like such. Wow, that is a big cursor. Uh, and then say take a screenshot of uh, the query as well. So that way it shows like, hey, uh, this is the select statement and here are the results from the select statement. So uh, again, this is just being super extra. You could snip perhaps this segment. Um, it might be good for your own notes to see this type of thing. Again, because you can see the select statement uh, up at the top. I've got a little cursor here with a marker. Uh, so you can see all that and, um, and what the results are. Um, that's really all I've got for Microsoft SQL uh, Management Studio. Thanks for watching.